in one of its actual research projects. The CBRN Research Institute focuses on developing a group of specialized military personnel which can be deployed on long-term and long-range infantry missions deeply into a contaminated area. Such personnel, capable to operate without any motorized vehicles or other support, could fulfill covered long-range reconnaissance missions into both hostile and occupied territory during ongoing combat activities involving chemical, radioactive or otherwise toxical warfare agents. But how can we extend both the physical and mental endurance and awareness of soldiers operating in such heavy and hermetically sealed equipment like the Zodiac protective suit worn display in this video material? First there are two possible ways to supply those operators with the next zuri flow of clean air or breathing gas they need to survive their mission in the possibly lethal environment of the combat zone. The operator could use a simple gas mask or a self-contained breathing apparatus which would supply him with air from carry-on filters in his backpack. Such SCB-8 systems, as worn by divers or astronauts, bring the disadvantage of a limited reserve of breathing gas which is to be carried by the operator himself. Since the tactical situation may force an operator to stay in his hermetically sealed suit for several days, a carry-on air or breathing gas tank really was not an option. Therefore the operators at the CBRN Research Institute are trained to operate using multi-layered heavy gas filters which should clean the outside air from the most known and most lethal warfare agents. But it is not only the effort to breathe from the restricted flow of air caused by those filters, it is as well the effect of thermal insulation to the face caused by the tightly fitting gas mask, which poses an enormous physical burden onto the CBRN operator. If he has to operate on an extended mission in full encapsulation, sweat will accumulate both inside the Zodiac suit and inside the mask. The latter may rinse into his eyes and hinder his visual capacity. Therefore, from time to time and usually during resting phases, operators must try to evacuate some of the sweat through the exhaust valve of their mask. Of course without lifting the mask, breaking any of the hermetic seals of his combat uniform and with no possibility to wipe his face. Since the operator's combat backpack only contains mission-related material, tools, armament and the carry-on water reservoir, the operator can as well unload the backpack while keeping up full CBRN protected posture. This can be necessary for both tactical reasons and is recommended during resting phases. Such unloading would be impossible if the operator's supply of oxygen or breathing air would depend on a valve connection to tanks inside his backpack. We consider this modularity to be another big advantage of the filter-based Zodiac protective equipment. For example putting off the backpack allows the operator to approach an enemy recon target in low crawl mode as demonstrated by Operator Z squad in this video sequence. We must consider the CBRN soldier's movements are still hindered by the heavy gas tight suit but he can much better hide in pressing himself to the ground than an operator wearing a heavy set of air tanks on his back. Our main research target is to enable the CBRN soldier to move and operate like he has been trained to as an ordinary infantryman or long-range recon soldier before, but he will do so fully protected from chemical, biological, radioactive and nuclear warfare agents which would be lethal to the, let's say old-fashioned infantryman. But what are the psychological effects of operating in such gas tight suits for an extended mission time? We could talk about those mental effects with Mr. Su Cal Tayat, an external observer and consultant to the CBRN Research Institute, who at the same time is a member of the Great Lakes Protection and Survival Think Tank. Indeed. Upon the completion of a long, difficult and demanding mission the reconnaissance soldier in his hermetically sealed zodiac suit will experience true euphoria. I can attest that there are few life experiences comparable in exhilaration to those minutes of supreme relief after mastering the mission in the lethal hot zone and one's own fears of failure. But can you tell us? Mr. Su Kaltayat, why operators such as Zed Squad, even after returning to a safe zone, do not hurry to just get out of their heavy, sweaty and restricting protective ensemble. Is this only professionalism and a drill-trained behavior? 
Thanks to advances in pathophysiology, we now know that this state of satisfaction experienced by certain military CBRN operators upon returning safely from a contaminated area is the result of the release of certain chemicals in the brain. In a way, it is a way in which the brain rewards the body for submitting itself to a state of danger and duress. This satisfied state can be as physically addictive as cocaine or sugar. Supervisors of CBRN operators need to be aware of the potential dangers of encouraging addictive behaviors. In moderation, they may benefit the team and provide a sense of welcome relief for an endangered recruit, but if the recruit begins to seek out risk and continues to arrest for mere pleasure, intervention will likely be required to break the cycle of behavior.